Greetings. Archimedes was probably one of the best at doing mathematics in his age. Archimedes is probably one of my great heroes, mathematically speaking. He had insights that would not be equaled for almost a thousand years by any other mathematician. And one of his great feats, he has numerous, but one of them is figuring out what is the value of pi. Now we today know that pi cannot be represented as a decimal number. We approximate it and there are people who spend minutes, hours, days memorizing long strings of decimals. In my opinion, that's rather useless. It's a number we're not going to know. Not exactly. But we can estimate it. And Archimedes is going to provide us with one of these great estimates. And he's going to do it two ways. He's first going to give us a number that he knows is too large. And he's also going to give us a number that he knows is too small. And what he's going to do is by having a number that is too large and one that is too small in size, what he's going to do is make this number approach the smaller number, and the smaller number is going to have to approach the larger number, and what has to be in between is where pi is. And so basically he's going to do what you learned how to do in calculus is use the squeeze theorem. He's going to squeeze as close as he can to what this value is by saying, I can do something I know is larger, I'm doing something I know has to be smaller, but they've gotten so close together, you can't really tell the difference between them anymore, and therefore this must be between them. Let's watch what Archimedes, the great master, is going to do. And this is how Archimedes would go about it. Well, first off, understand that pi is a value that we are assuming relates to values. If I know how far it is around a circle, and I know how far it is across the circle, pi is defined to be the distance around divided by the diameter. This is a definition. And this definition is very important for us to understand. Pi, we normally see this formula written this way. Circumference is pi times diameter. And we view it almost as a function where circumference is a function of diameter. This really is not the way we should even teach it. We need to teach it the top way where we're claiming there exists a number pi, a unique number, that works for every circle where the circumference divided by the diameter of whatever circle you have must be equal to pi. It just so happens we can now do some arithmetic at this level. So, what Archimedes is going to do is he's going to begin by saying, I have a circle. At the edge of my circle, I'm going to have a diameter and I'm going to create a perpendicular, giving me a right angle. That's going to be very important for us. And then what Archimedes is going to do is he's going to give us some polygons to take a look at. So let's look at the first one. And here it is, the hexagon. Archimedes is going to begin with this hexagon, and what he is going to do is say that I know this hexagon, since it is described about the circle must have a perimeter greater than that of the circle. So, he's saying the perimeter of a six gone is greater than the circumference of this circle that we have. Not a problem. Now then, the second step is going to be to say, all right, if I can put a hexagon around this, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each side of the hexagon in half, and by doing that, I'm going to create yet another 
polygon to go around this. Let's take a look. And we now have it. We have the dodecagon, the 12-sided figure. And what we're now able to say is that the polygon of six sides has a greater perimeter than the polygon of 12 sides, which must be more than the circumference of the circle. Now, I'm going to be able to do the same thing that Archimedes did, and Archimedes is going to take this several steps, and he'll say the six must be greater than the perimeter of the 12-sided, which is greater than the perimeter of the 24-sided, which is greater than the perimeter of the 48-sided, which is more than the perimeter of the 96-sided, which still has to be greater than the circumference of the circle. And we could keep going as far as we want, but we're going to double the number of sides every time. And the reason is we're going to build what's called an iterative process, a process where when I figure out information about the six-sided and how it relates to the circle, that's going to give me information that lets me figure out what's going to be the 12-sided. And once I know the 12 and how it relates to the circle, that leads me to information that lets me solve the problem of the 24, the 48, and the 96. Now, fear not, we're not going to use Archimedes' limitations, meaning we're not going to simply use fractions only. Remember, Archimedes had a very strict limitation. He doesn't have decimal numbers. He has to do everything with fractions. And we're going to see in just a moment how daunting that's going to be. So let's come back and take a look at how do we actually want to solve this problem.